my name is Rachel and I'm from the TGF Conferencing and Events team and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the lands on which we meet today and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. I would like to extend that acknowledgement and respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here online with us today. Good morning everyone. My name is Catherine Fuller and I'm the Assistant Director for the Post-Market Reforms and Review section in the Medical Devices Surveillance Branch of the Therapeutic Goods Administration. So thank you for joining us today to discuss the new features on the Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard. Sponsors can now view and respond to notifications related to devices that are part of an application for consent to import, supply or export a medical device that does not comply with the essential principles. Notifications may include an informal request for additional information regarding an application, letters advising of the outcome of a submitted application, and regulatory letters related to devices that are part of an approved consent application. Today's webinar will be divided into a few parts. We'll go through some introductory slides and then a live demonstration of the new features on the dashboard. Any remaining time will be dedicated to a question and answer session. The topics covered by the webinar today will be a brief background on consent applications and why you may need to apply for consent, an introduction to the different types of notifications relating to consent applications, how to view the notifications, how to draft and send a response to a notification, and how to request an extension to a notification response due date. So let's begin with a refresher on why you may need to apply for consent for non-compliant devices. The reason you may need to apply for consent to import, supply or export medical devices that are non-compliant with the essential principles is because there are criminal offences under Section 41MA and civil penalties under Section 41MA-A of the Therapeutic Goods Act. If you supply non-compliant medical devices, unless consent has been granted by the Secretary of the Department of Health and Aged Care. Whilst the TGA expects and requires compliance with the essential principles, there may be some extenuating circumstances preventing compliance to one or more parts of an essential principle for a limited period of time. If this is the case, then you can apply for consent for the medical devices, even though there are some non-compliances. The TGA will review the risk of supplying the non-compliant medical devices with consideration to the risk mitigation strategies that the sponsor or manufacturer are going to put into place for this period of time. It should be noted that if your non-compliant medical device is currently part of an application to vary the device or manufacturer's evidence, or you have an application for inclusion in the ARTG and the device is going to be supplied whilst non-compliant with the essential principles, you will still need to apply for consent. If you're seeking consent for non-compliant devices, an authorised representative of the sponsor will need to complete and submit the consent application form, which is hosted on the TGA Business Services site. A link to this can be found on the TGA's Essential Principles Consent for Non-Compliance webpage. This webpage also provides you with a copy of the guidance document on how to complete the application form. In the application, you'll need to upload and include all relevant documentation such as the risk mitigation strategy and implementation plan, and then pay the applicable processing fees in full. The delegate of the secretary will take all relevant information into consideration when determining whether to grant consent. A notification will then be sent to the sponsor advising them of the outcome. Yesterday, we presented a webinar on how to apply for consent. So if you missed it, you'll be able to access the recording on the TGA website shortly. So now we've had a refresher on the reasons for applying for consent and how to apply, I'd like to talk briefly about the types of notifications related to consent applications. The new release of the Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard delivers functionality which gives sponsors the ability to view and respond to a range of notifications related to their consent applications. This means the dashboard will now be a one-stop shop for your consent application throughout its life cycle. Notifications you may receive on the Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard include an informal request for additional information regarding a submitted application or a response to a notification. For example, if the delegate assessing a submitted application requires more information to be able to make an informed decision regarding the outcome, they may send the sponsor an additional information notification asking for clarification or for some additional documentation. 
This is different to a Section 41 JA request for information notification as it is an informal request for additional information to assist the delegate with the assessment of your application. Another type of notification is one advising the sponsor of the outcome of a submitted application. These include consent approval or not approved notifications, a notification regarding an application withdrawal. So if you withdrew the application after submission, the TGA will send you a notification to um, confirm that you've withdrawn it, as well as consent revoked and consent expired notifications. For approved consent applications, the approval notification will be the notification that you will be required to respond to and submit evidence of compliance for all the devices before the end of the consent period. And we will cover this in more detail in the live demonstration. And the last type of notification you may see on the dashboard are regulatory letters. These are regulatory letters related to devices that are part of an approved consent application. These can include, but are not limited to, Section 41JA requests for information, proposals to suspend or cancel a device, cancellation or suspension letters, and letters relating to conditions of inclusion. These notifications will work in a very similar way to those sent to sponsors in the post-market review database. There will be some notifications that will require a response from the sponsor, such as a Section 41 JA request for information, and others that sponsors do not respond to, such as cancellation letters. So now that we've discussed the different types of notifications, let's have a refresher on how to access the dashboard. The Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard is hosted on the TGA Business Services site, or TBIS as we call it. You log in as you would normally for any other applications or adverse event reporting, and then under the Applications drop-down menu, select Medical Device Post-Market Compliance option under the Regulatory Compliance heading. This will take you to the PMR Compliance Dashboard where you can select the Consent for Non-Compliance Applications tile to access the next dashboard where you will see the notifications related to your consent applications. So now I'd like to switch over to a live demonstration of the Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard and show you how to view, draft and submit responses to the notifications. On the Consent for Non-Compliance Dashboard, you will see three tabs. Here on the Draft tab, you can view and edit all of your draft consent applications. So these are applications that have yet to be submitted. On the submitted tab, you can view all of your previously submitted consent applications and have a look at their status here to follow them through. So you can see whether they've been submitted, whether they're currently under review by the TGA, whether they've been approved, not approved, revoked or expired. But the tab and view that we're interested in today is the notifications tab, where you can view and respond to notifications related to your consent applications. Like the other tables in the draft and submitted views, you can sort the table by clicking on the different column headers. So let's go ahead and have a look at the information that is included in this table. You can see here that the first column is the notification ID. And this is the unique identifying ID for this particular notification. You may notice that it does have the CTS application ID number in the front, followed by the name or type of the notification. So here we've got the CTS application you know, 0192, and this one here is a consent approved notification. If you click on this, um, it will order them by numerical order. Next, you'll see this column, which is just application name. And this is the name of the consent application to which it's relevant. And this is the name that we gave our application when we created it. We've got the notification type. So what it is here, so we've got a consent approved notification, we've got not approved, application withdrawn, additional information. And if it was a regulatory letter, it might have the name of the um, regulatory letter in that as well. Here we also have the status of the notification. And here you'll see three different statuses. You'll either see sent awaiting response, completed or expired. Where you see sent awaiting response, this indicates that this is a notification that requires a response from the sponsor, that the notification is current and it is awaiting your response. And here you can see the response due date. Where you see completed, it can mean one of two things. It may mean that this is a notification that you cannot respond to. 
If that is the case, it'll automatically come up as completed when it appears in the portal and there will be no response due date. So you can see in this example, this is an application withdrawn notification, a consent not approved um, notification and a revoked notification. And these particular types of notifications do not require a response from the sponsor. The other type of completed uh, will indicate that an, a response has already been received against that notification. So you can see here against an approved uh, consent notification, uh, we've got a due date, but it says completed. So this means that a response has already been submitted. Once again, we've got the response due date and the received date. You can also use the search box to search for a notification. You can search by typing in the name of the application, the consent application ID, or if you know it, the notification ID itself. You can also do a partial search using the asterisk as a wildcard character. So for today, let's search for all the notifications related to one particular consent application. And I know my number here, so I'm going to um, type that in and select the magnifying glass. You can see here that we have four different notifications related to this consent application. We have a cancellation letter for a device or devices that are part of this consent application. We have a section 41JA request for information for devices that are also part of this consent application. We have an additional information notification. And of course, we have our consent approval notification. You can see that the cancellation letter has no response due date as we cannot respond to this notification, whereas the other notifications have a res response due date in the columns provided and the notification status is sent awaiting response. So they are uh, awaiting a response. So firstly, I would like to show you how we can simply view a notification. And we're gonna view the cancellation letter. If we click on the down arrow button along the row of the notification that we wish to view, some options will come up. If we choose the preview function, this will open it up on another page for us to be able to view and print. So we can go ahead and do that. So let's select preview. This will bring it up in this type of format where all the information of all the different parts of the notification will appear on one page for you to be able to print. To do this, you simply select the print button and in this window here, you can select to save as a PDF or you can select your printer to print. We'll just cancel out of that. To return to our dashboard, you can simply select the back button here. This will bring us back to the notifications dashboard, but you can see that we have lost the filter for looking at notifications relevant to just that one application. So I'm just going to enter that again. Okay. Another way that we can view the um, cancellation or any type of notification is by selecting the view details option. If we select the view details option, this will display the consent for non-compliance notification view, where there will be five non-editable sections related to the notification. If we click on the notifications details section, we can view the notification ID and the consent to supply application number to which this is relevant to. We'll also have a section down here for all the notification documents relevant to this notification. In the emails folder at the bottom of this section will be the email and letter associated with the notification that was sent by the TGA. So in this case, it'll be the email that was sent to the sponsor and a copy of the cancellation letter. You may have noticed that the notification section changed from blue to green when we clicked on it. This indicates that the information in this section is auto-populated and complete. So if we go ahead and click on the ARTGs and Applications for Inclusion section, we'll be able to view the devices related to this particular notification. A notification may relate to all or only some of the devices in the consent application. If you have more than four devices, um, you will have to scroll through to the second page here to be able to see them. You'll note that this section will also change from blue to green when clicked on as it um, all the information here is auto-populated. If we click on the non-compliant essential principles, we will view the essential principles related to the notification. 
the EPs in this section may be different to the EPs related to the consent application. And this is populated by the TGA when they raise the notification. So in this example, the um, cancellation letter may be related to a different EP, to the non-compliant EP for which consent was granted. When we open the sponsor responses section, we can see that there are no responses to this notification. This is due to the fact that this is a cancellation notification and no response is required by the sponsor. For other types of notifications that require a response, if you choose view details after submitting a response to a notification, the response will be populated in this box and I will show you this um, in another notification. Similarly, for this particular notification, no extensions can be granted as it's a cancellation letter. But for other notifications where an extension to the response due date is possible, if an extension has been requested, you'll see the details in this section. And I will also show you this in a coming notification. Please note that notifications can be viewed by users with either draft or submitter access. So any authorised user can view notifications. So um, I've just selected back there. And as you can see, it's taken me back to the notifications dashboard. I will filter back down through to our um, notifications relevant to my consent application. So now that we've gone through how we can view a notification, I'd like to demonstrate how to draft and submit a response to a notification. A response to a notification can only be submitted by an authorised user with submitter access to the TBIS portal. If you have draft access and are not authorised to submit a response, then you'll only be able to draft and save a response. But today we're going to draft and submit a response to the consent approved notification. So when a consent application is approved, a notification and letter of approval is issued by the TGA and will appear in the notifications table. As part of the consent process, sponsors are required to provide evidence of compliance with the essential principles before the end of the consent period. You will provide this evidence as part of your response to the consent approved notification. You can submit your evidence of compliance in multiple responses as devices within the consent application become compliant throughout the consent period. And this is different to all the other notifications where you can only submit a response to a notification once. So our consent approved notification is a little bit special. To respond to the consent approved notification or any other notification, we click on the down arrow button on the right hand side against our notification and select the draft option. This will bring the notification up in the notification draft. On this view, you'll notice that there are five sections related to the notification. There is an option here to expand all sections at once, or you can expand one section at a time by clicking on the section you wish to expand. The notification details, ARTGs and applications for inclusion and non-compliant essential principles are non-editable. These sections will change from blue to green when um, selected, indicating they are, um, that all mandatory information in this section is auto-populated and already complete. Okay, so we've opened the notifications section. Here you can view, once again, the notification ID, the um, CTS application number that has been approved, and we've got our document folders here. In the emails folder, as before, you can see a copy of the email and the approval letter that was sent to the sponsor um, for this consent application. You can also see that there is another folder in this section indicating that a response has been provided previously. So in this example, we've already submitted compliance evidence for some, but not all of the devices in this particular consent application. If I click on this folder, it will um, bring up all the documents that I uploaded as part of my response and um, I'll be going through and showing you this for our responses that we're about to create. Here in this section, in the ARTGs and Applications for Inclusion section, you can see all the devices um, that have been given consent in this approved consent application. In the non-compliant EP section, this will show the EPs which the devices are non-compliant with and for which consent has been granted. 
Okay, so to create a response to our notification, we're going to click on the Sponsor Responses section. You can see here, as mentioned previously, a response that's been previously submitted, and this will appear here in the table. Please note that you cannot edit a response that has already been submitted. So let's pretend for our demonstration that response one was when we submitted compliance evidence for all four ARTGs, but only against EP13. And now we want to provide a response for all ARTGs against the remaining EP, EP3. But due to the um, evidence that we're going to submit, we'd like to provide this evidence in two groups. One for the first two ARTGs here, and then another lot of evidence for the second lot. So we're going to create two response groups in this particular response submission. So to create our new responses, to provide our compliance evidence against EP3, we need to click on the Add Response button. This will open a new window in the current view where you can provide a relevant name for the response. So in our case, I'm going to call this one EP3 for ARTG 1 and 2. Now I could write the whole um, ARTG number, but just for speed's sake, I'm going to write 1 and 2, So because we have 4 in our application. This will create our response and um, name it, and it will appear in our, our table ready for us to edit and add our evidence of compliance. At this step, because it's creating folders in the background and getting this response ready, sometimes it can take just a little while to process. Okay, so you can see here now that we've got the response name, we don't have our details in there yet, no attachments yet. It's got the date that we've created it. And um, to be able to now um, go in and edit the response and, and provide these details, we simply click on the down arrow button and select edit. Okay, so this is going to open another window in the current view. Now here, you can change the name. So if you um, want to change the name, you just simply change the name in this box provided. By default, all ARTG entries and applications for inclusion and EPs relevant to the notification uh, will be included in the response. So if you are not providing compliance evidence for all these devices um, within the consent period at this particular time, or you wish to provide multiple responses like we're going to do today, you're going to need to exclude the devices not included in this particular response group. So we're going to provide the evidence against ARTG 1 and 2. So 3 and 4 here, we need to exclude. And we do that simply by clicking on the arrow button and excluding them. This will update our table with a no to show that this device has been excluded from this response. The same thing goes with the essential principles. As we mentioned before, in our um, example, we know that the um, first response um, delivered the evidence um, of compliance for EP13, and this one is just relevant to EP3, so I need to exclude this EP here. Okay, and you can see that the table has been um, updated and um, this EP has been excluded. Next, you need to um, select how you wish to provide a response. Responses can be provided by typing a summary in the free text box provided or by attaching relevant documents or by providing both a summary and documents. Documents can be uploaded in Word, Excel and PDF formats with a file size of up to 50 megabytes. So here you can select provide a summary, attach evidence of compliance or you can do both. For our example, we're going to do both. So we're going to provide a summary in the box provided and we're going to add a file. So here to add a file, we simply select the Add Files button. We click in the Choose Files box and we select our file. It'll bring up my computer's explorer. I can attach a document and um, add this file here. And now you can see that this document is added. But um, if you make a mistake or if you come back to this later and decide you want to update it, you can actually delete this document. So say, for example, I've just accidentally update, um, uploaded the wrong document and I want to replace it. I can simply use the arrow button here, select delete, 
a pop-up will come to ensure that I'm sure I want to delete this. I select delete and it will delete the um, document from my response. So let's go ahead now and add the correct one. We simply click in the box, choose files, it brings up my explorer and I'm going to bring up um, part A of my evidence. Going to add files there and you can see here that my document has been uploaded. Now you might like to upload more than one document, you just repeat the process. So in this case, I wanna upload part B of my evidence. I just go through the process again, select the next document. I select add and you can see now that I've got both my documents there. So once you've done that, we need to select the checkbox to acknowledge that at least one file, because that's the option that we chose that we are uploading a document, has been uploaded and we select save to save the response. And you can see that the added response will display in the table. So we've got our summary information and we have um, yes to the attachment. So if I need to change that, I can simply edit or delete this response as long as I do it prior to me submitting this response. So I'm happy with that group, but we want to submit another group for the evidence for ARTG 3 and 4, and we simply just go through the same process. So this is going to be EP 3 for ARTG 3 and 4. Oops. We select save and close. This will create the response and add it to our table, for which then we can go in and edit. So there it is there. We select edit. I'm happy with the name. Now you can see here, this is good actually, you can see here that there are no records to display. So there's no ARTGs. Sometimes um, you need to just simply refresh the table by clicking on any of the column headers and it will refresh the table and those ARTGs should appear. So I'm just going to refresh my table. So this time we're going to exclude the first two because we have just submitted evidence for those. And like our previous group, we're going to exclude EP13 because we have already um, submitted evidence to that in the very first response um, before today. And um, we just want to give evidence against EP3. So let's um, provide, let's um, provide a summary and attach a document. We'll just add our file. You can see here that it is added our evidence of compliance. We can delete and change that if we need to, but we're happy with that. We acknowledge that at least one file has been uploaded and we select save. Once again, you can um, edit or delete a response by clicking on the down arrow button and choosing the relevant option. Now, all the documents that we have uploaded as part of our responses are now going to appear up here in our notifications details section. So a SharePoint folder is created for each response um, to this notification and is listed on the table in chronological order. If you see that your response folder is not appearing on the table, just click on the column header to refresh the table and your um, folder should appear. So let's have a look. Um, if you want to have a look at the documents, you can see that by clicking on that folder for my response number four, this um, has got the document in there. Okay. So you can see, you might notice um, that the AMBER, that the sponsor's response section has remained AMBER um, even when you've provided all the information. And this is just a design change from the application form. So it's just slightly different. This um, accordion or section will stay AMBER um, the, even if you've provided the information. So don't panic if it stays AMBER, that's by design. The next section we have down here is extension requests and obviously this is where we could request an extension um, to the consent period and view any other previous requests for extensions and the extension decisions. So you can see here that we've already requested and had approved an extension to our consent period. We proposed that the consent period be changed to the 13th of October 2023 
And the TGA approved this decision and actually agreed with the date. Um, so uh, we will take you through how to apply for an extension. But at this point, I'm actually, I don't need another extension because I've actually just submitted all the compliance evidence um, in this last two and um, I'm ready to submit the final, final um, response to this notification. So now, if you are someone with draft access and you have drafted this response, you will not be able to validate and submit this response. You will simply have to press back and all this um, work that you've drafted into this notification will be saved and someone can come, uh, someone with submitter access will come in at a later point and be able to submit it. But I have submitter access and I would actually like to submit it. So once you're ready to submit your response to the notification, we select the validate button. This will bring up another um, pop-up box, which will ask us if we do want to proceed to submission, which I'm going to select as OK. This will um, bring us to another page where it lets us know that the notification has been successfully validated. And we've got two options here. We can click on the preview button to preview um, the responses. And if we click that, the same thing, it'll come up in the same format that we saw when we previewed the cancellation letter. It will come up in um, all on one page for you to be able to review the notification and the response details. And from there, you can print. By selecting preview, however, we are not done yet. We still have to declare and go um, uh, declare and submit the thing. So if you choose preview, it will open up in another tab um, and you'll have to return here to be able to then declare and submit. So I, I don't need to preview at the moment. I'm going to go forth and declare and submit. I read the declaration and I un we're here. I understand that's the final submission um, and that this information will be used by the TGA in evaluate evaluating compliance with the Therapeutic Goods Act and the Therapeutic Goods Regulations. I understand that the documents and information provided is required to be in English. So if I agree to this, it's a mandatory field here. I select yes and I submit. A pop-up box will come up here um, asking me if I'm sure I want to submit the notification. I simply select OK. This will bring us back to the notifications tab. So I still want to filter back down to my responses. And um, this is a bit of a glitch. Usually this would now say completed. So this is uh, a lower testing environment that we're showing you today. And sometimes in these environments, there can be glitches. However, in the production um, environment in which you're working today, um, this will not happen. So if your response to the consent approval does not provide evidence, uh, for all devices and EPs, the TGA will have to reopen the notification after reviewing it to allow you to provide additional responses to cover the remaining devices and EPs. So what will happen is the, once you submit your response, the TGA staff will review the information and if they need to, um, if it doesn't supply all the evidence against all the EPs and ARTGs, they will change the um, status of the submission from completed back to sent awaiting response to reopen the portal and allow additional responses. Say for example, if you submit a response to your consent approved notification on a Monday, and then on the Tuesday, you think I'm ready to submit another lot, but you go back in and it still says complete here in the status of that notification. That just means that the TGA hasn't had the time to go in, review your documentation and reopen it. What you can do though, is you can email us at mdconsent at health.gov.au and let us know that you would like that consent approved notification to be reopened so that you can provide additional compliance evidence and the staff will do that for you. So this is how we draft and submit a response to a notification. Back here on the notification dashboard, we can also view details and um, preview details. If we want to um, save as a PDF or print our um, responses to this notification. So now I would like to show you how to request an extension to a notification. And we will do this for our section 41 JA request. If you are having difficulty providing the information to a notification in the required timeframe, you can submit a request for an extension to the due date. 
All extension requests will be considered by the TGA on a case-by-case -case basis. A response due date extension request can only be submitted for notifications that are current and have not expired. The notification status of a current notification will be displayed as sent awaiting response. So we must see sent awaiting response for you to be able to draft and submit an extension uh, request. If it is expired already, you are not able to do that. Please note that only users with authorised um, submitter access for the TBIS portal will be able to draft and submit an extension request. Users with the draft access are not even able to draft or submit an extension request. So let's go ahead and have a look at our Section 41 JA request for information notification and then request an extension to the response due date. To do this, we're going to click on the down arrow button and select draft. So as we did for the other notifications, we can view the information related to this notification by clicking on the different sections. We can expand them all at once or do them one at a time. So the, here are the details pertaining to my section 41 JA. We've got the notification ID and the CTS application number to which this is relevant. Once again, we've got our emails folder where we can view the email and the section 41 JA regulatory letter that the TGA sent to us. When I click on here, I can see all the ARTGs or applications for inclusion that are relevant to this section 41 JA. And just a reminder that this may not be all the ARTGs in your consent application, just what's relevant to this section 41 JA. If you have more than four, you may need to scroll over um, to another page. We've got our non-compliant um, essential principles, and these are the essential principles that are relevant to this section 41 JA. In the sponsor responses, you can see that no response um, has been created because we haven't done it yet. And in fact, we need more time and that's why we're going to request an extension. So to request an extension, we simply slip, um, click on the extension request section. We click on the request extension button. And this will bring up a new window in the current view. And here you can see what the current notification due date is. Here you can select a new proposed due date. So let's say we need till the end of November to provide this information. We simply enter the new proposed date and a reason. And you can see that these fields are marked with a red asterisk, meaning that they are mandatory and we must provide this information. Now we've got two options here. We can either um, submit this request now or um, we can um, save it and come back later. So let's say, for example, I'm pretty sure that that's the date um, that I'll be able to do it, but I'm not sure and I want to check with a colleague. So at this point, I'm going to select no, but I'm going to save it. And this will save and in draft my extension request. And you can see here that the um, extension request has been added to this table here, but there's no decision. Not yet. I haven't submitted it. No due date yet either. And you can see that it hasn't been submitted. So let's say I um, go and check with a colleague um, and then come back and say, you know what, I actually do want to um, submit this now. To do that, I simply select edit. Let's say, oh, I actually, I think I can do that a little bit sooner. We'll go the 27th, I can change the date. I can change some of my explanation. And this time I'm gonna select yes, I would like to submit my extension request. I scroll down to the bottom and select save. A pop-up box will let me know that once I submit the request, you're not able to change the details and ask me if I wanna go ahead and submit this request, which I do. So I'm going to select OK. And you can see here that the table will be updated with the request details. So once submitted, the request decision will display as pending until a decision has been made by the TGA. If the extension request has been accepted by the TGA and the decision will, um, the decision will appear as approved and the notification response due date will be updated with a new due date. So the TGA may select a different due date to what you've proposed. So if you propose something that's a little outlandish, um, the TGA may give you a different new due date and that will be um, populated here. 
If the request has been rejected, the extension decision will be displayed as disapproved and the response due date will remain the same as before. Um, as we have simply requested an extension for this notification and we are not submitting a response to this notification at this time, we do not press the validate button. We simply select back button to ref, um, return us to the notifications view. And you can see it's brought us back. I'm just going to filter down to my um, notifications relevant to this particular application. So now we've seen how we can view a notification, draft and respond to a notification, and how to request an extension to a notification. I would now like to show you the additional information notification. If the TGA requires further information for the review of your submitted consent application or for a response to a notification, you'll receive an additional information notification. This notification is different to a formal Section 41 JA request for information and has no letter attached to the email. All details of the request will be included in the email that the TGA sends you. And you can view that email again by clicking on the emails folder in the notification details section. And just before we have a look at this notification, just a reminder that this notification is, um, you can only um, submit a response once. So as we've mentioned previously, the consent approved notification is the only type of notification here that you can submit a response more than once. A response can only be submitted once for every other type of notification, all the regulatory letters and the additional information notification. So the consent approved notification is a bit different and special. You can create multiple response groups within your notification response as we did before. We did two different groups um, in the one response, but you can only submit the response once. So you must ensure that when you do respond to a notification that is not consent approved, any of the others, that your response has covered all the devices and EPs in the notification before you submit the response to the TGA. Okay, so um, let's uh, have a look at this additional information email notification. To do that, same thing, we simply um, select draft from the drop down menu next to the notification, and this will bring it up in our notification draft view. The same thing here, we can expand the sections to have a look at the different information. We can um, view the email here. And um, once we have responded, our response folders will come up here. Here we'll have the ARTGs that they are asking additional information about. And you can see here that there's two. Now you might notice now that there is no section here for non-compliant essential principles. And this is because um, the information that the TGA has requested is not relevant to any particular EP. They're just asking for some additional information here on these two ARTGs. So this accordion or section for EPs will not appear and that's okay. Once again, if we wanna provide a response, we simply go ahead and go through the process of adding a response here. And the same thing if we wish to um, do an extension request for this particular notification, we can do that by requesting the extension and going through the process here. So I just wanted to show you um, this additional information one because it's a little different in that there were no EPs um, selected in this. So I'm just gonna return back. Okay, so we've covered a lot and um, I think that can be the end of our live demonstration. Please, just a reminder that we do have a lovely guidance document that will walk you through all of these different things, viewing, responding, asking for an extension um, on the TGA website, and also that this webinar will be recorded. And of course, if after looking at the guidance document, you're still a little bit unsure, you can always email us at mdconsent at health.gov.au to get more information. Okay, so I'm just gonna end my um, live demonstration and return back to the webinar. I'd like to introduce Dipti Mehta. She is part of the reforms and reviews team and has been completely like instrumental in building um, the features that we've shown you today. So if I can't answer any of the questions, Dipti might be able to. Of course, if some of the questions we're not able to answer at this time, we will take them on notice and get back to you, uh, but we'll do our best. <laughs> so go ahead, Dipti. Sure, okay, so the first question for this morning is, 
Will I be able to provide evidence of compliance for a device that was initially a part of application for inclusion and after approval now has an ARTG entry number? Yes, so if um, you do have an application for inclusion that is part of a consent uh, application that becomes approved and then it gets an ARTG, what will happen is that the devices application section tells um, the team that uh, take care of our consent applications that a new ARTG has been um, given to that and the TGA will actually update that approved notification with that ARTG number and it'll just update in the portal and uh, so when you go back into it you'll see that that ARTG number um, has been awarded. So of course if you um, go in and you see that that hasn't happened yet and you've got your new ARTG you can email us at MD consent and let us know and we can update that. But that is generally done as part of the process for sure and then of course you can then provide evidence of compliance for that new ARTG. Thank you Catherine. Uh, the next question is, can I seek extension for the consent period? And if so, how do I submit the extension request? Yes, you can um, seek extension for uh, the consent approval period. Um, and you would do that simply by going through the same process that we did today. You would um, draft, um, choose draft as in draft a response and you would go down to the extension request and go through that process. It's really important to note though that you can only request an extension if the notification is current and not expired. So you can't ask for an, uh, an extension to the approval period, so the consent period, if it's already expired. You need to do it beforehand, otherwise um, that notification becomes expired and you won't be able to go in and request it. So you can do it, do it while it's current and you can do it in that method um, that we showed you today against the consent approved notification. Sweet. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, next question is, can you confirm that the CTS portal is not where the TGA would send uh, sponsor section 41J letter for current medical device applications? So, um, We've got the post market review database and the consent to supply database. If the section 41JA is related to a device that is part of a current approved consent application, it will be sent through the CTS database, so this notifications. If it is for a different ARTG that is not part of a um, approved consent um, application, it'll be sent in the normal PMR dashboard. And you can see that they're very similar. Um, it's the same database, it is um, built in the same way. Um, and so hopefully there's a bit of familiarity there. If you've um, answered a section 41 JA in the portal, you'll notice that it looks and feels pretty similar to that. So yes, it depends on the ARTG, but if that ARTG is part of the consent, um, uh, uh, the consent approved, it will, it will come through the CTS database, yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, the next question is, if I need to add a document to support a submission, do I simply request through the email? Um, so as you can see, um, it would depend. So if you're creating a response and you want to submit your document, you do it through this um, uh, format. So you would go in, create your response and add your document there. Um, if you submit your response and you realise that you have forgotten to add a document or you need to add some different um, information, um, but it's already come up as complete because um, basically you get one shot at responding to a notification, of course, unless it's the consent approved notification, you can always email um, us at mdconsent at tga.gov.au and let us know, hey, I've just submitted a notification and I forgot to add a particular document, could you please add it? and you just need to give us the CTS application and the type of notification or the notification ID. So you can let us know and then we can go in and add it from the back end and then it will actually appear when you go in to have a look at the details. So the TGA can update in the back end and then it will refresh on your end and you'll be able to see it in the sponsor portal. So all is not lost. If you accidentally forget, just email us and um, we can add that extra information in for you. And just a reminder that we've got guidance documents um, this webinar will be recorded and um, you can watch it back on the TGA website 
And um, if you have any, um, after reading the guidance document and having a go yourself, if you do have any additional questions, you can just email the team at mdconsent at health.gov.au. Um, Thanks, Rachel. Well done. Thank you both. <clears throat> just to wrap up there, just some of our social media websites that you may also find uh, useful. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, just to name a few. So thank you again, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.